In addition to producing high quality affordable food that is a staple of the American diet, potato growers are committed to environmental stewardship. Their stewardship of the land includes soil and water conservation, improvement of wildlife habitat, and the safe, effective use of pesticides. Each year, the National Potato Council recognizes truly outstanding commitment to these environmental principles. The award winners for 2008 are Staunton Farms, brothers Ed, Sid, and Marshall Staunton of Tule Lake, California, and Black Gold of Grand Forks, North Dakota, Greg Halverson, President and CEO. Both family operations began in the late 1920s. Webb Staunton, an Easterner, homesteaded on 60 acres in the Klamath Basin because he loved its abundant wildlife. As fate would have it, he became a potato farmer, according to grandson Sid. In course, the events of the world changed in 1929, and all the money that he had back east was evaporated in two days of the stock market crash. So all of a sudden, he was out here, and farming became his primary source of income. Ed Staunton says they now farm on a total of 5,000 acres in an area ideal for growing potatoes. We are located right on the upper end of California State, right on the Oregon border in what is called the Klamath Basin. We farm close to around 5,000 acres there. On this farm, one of the things is it's a high desert climate. We uh, get cool nights and warm days, which is just perfect for potatoes. Very, very similar to what the climate is over in Idaho. An integral part of environmental stewardship on Staunton Farms are the walking wetlands. Ron Cole of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service explains the concept. In essence, what we've done is working with private landowners, principally farmers here in the Tule Lake Basin, putting wetlands out on private lands and moving them across a, a landowner's farm where they may only stay for one, two, perhaps three years, and then move on to another location. And the farmers would go back in to where they had been previously a, a wetland for a few years, go back in and farm that. The Stauntons were first to try the walking wetlands, which reinvigorate the soil for potato production. The average size of a wetland is 70 to 100 acres. They can farm a portion of refuge land while theirs is flooded. It's reduced their uh, chemical inputs, it's reduced many of the dollars that they've been having to put in over decades to combat various pests and such. Um, it actually helps. And from a wildlife perspective, we're seeing bird species and entire guilds of species reappearing out on the landscape where we haven't seen them for decades, using and occupying these wetlands. Um, and as they move across, these birds are following these wetlands. Irrigation water became a critical issue in the Klamath Basin a few years ago. With the help of matching funds from the farm program, numerous changes were made by farmers to conserve water. Marshall Staunton explains. With that program, we were able to go, and many farmers in the Klamath Basin have totally revamped our, our irrigation systems. We've, uh, if we had old sprinkler pipe that had an outside gasket, we called it, that would leak terribly, we were able to chop those ends off and, and put uh, new uh, internal gasket ends on that. Ed says they also use a longer crop rotation, growing alfalfa, wheat, barley, and a small crop of mint. When I was younger, we were on a, probably a two to three year rotation with potatoes. And now we're, we've switched to a four to five year rotation. And we've seen that by doing this, our, our chemical use has decreased quite dramatically. And uh, we're also seeing that uh, fertilizer use comes down also. Winter wheat is grown after potato production to reduce soil erosion from strong winter winds. Sustainability is an important part of the culture of Staunton Farms, making sure what first attracted their grandfather to the area remains for future generations to enjoy. Greg Halverson's grandfather began growing potatoes on 10 acres in the Red River Valley in 1928. The family has been in the potato business every year since then. The black gold name dates to the 1960s. Black refers to the color of the hide of the registered Angus cattle we had at the time, as well as the black soil in the Red River Valley that we grew our potatoes in. Now, of course, gold refers to the color of the skin of the potatoes we grew as well as what we hope the relative value of those black Angus cattle would be, therefore black gold. 
black gold potatoes are now growing in 10 states on 15,000 acres. We have in that 15,000 acres the bulk of which we uh, grow for the potato chip industry. We have a number of solid customers all around the U.S. Uh, we've produced potatoes for potato chips and are shipped on a year-round basis. However, our forte is what we call fresh crop production. You know, our harvest starts about the 20th of April. We produce fresh crop potatoes basically all summer, and actually we're the largest producer of fresh crop chip potatoes in the world. Black Gold recognizes three forms of sustainability. Social, giving back to society, economic and environmental. Farmers look at the soil differently than our city brethren do. And, uh, you know, it's our bread and butter. You know, it's incumbent on us to take care of that soil, water, and air just one notch better than, uh, than necessary so we can, in fact, leave this earth in just a little better shape once we're gone. A systems-based approach is used for both economic and environmental decision-making, such as with IPM. Integrated pest management uh, begins with pre-season seed and soil evaluations and then it works through the summer through the production season in terms of field scouting and pre-harvest crop evaluations and so forth. Now a lot of this involves uh, record keeping, a lot of this involves doing things, you know, traceability is really important nowadays. You know, it's about a data-based production system and that's what we hang our hat on. Black Gold leases a high percentage of its potato production land annually. It carefully assesses crop rotations, fertilizer applications, and the past use of pesticides before renting any piece of land. It makes sure soil conservation is being practiced. Most of the potatoes on the farms that we rent are on highly erodible soils, you know, fairly sandy soils. So therefore, our landlords in many cases have tree shelter belts, grass waterways, etc., to minimize soil erosion. Of course, these tree shelter belts and waterways provide great habitat for wildlife. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of our guys are out deer hunting this weekend. Employees learn about pesticide and fertilizer handling and safety through training known as Black Gold Potato University. We have, at different times of the year, for different categories of our employees, we have uh, in-house folks as well as external folks, university people, extension people, uh, chemical company people, etc., that gather together and, and we think this gives us a competitive advantage by uh, educating our folks on a continuous basis on how to do things better. Black Gold has taken a leading role in studying a new potato disease in Texas known as zebra chip. It also has an extensive testing program to find new potato varieties resistant to pests and pathogens. Of course, we're always on the lookout for, for new varieties. As a matter of fact, we have very aggressive uh, variety evaluation trials at literally all of our farms. We have replicated field trials at nearly all of our farms, and then we have some field scale trials at other farms. Both Staunton Farms and Black Gold believe environmental stewardship is not just something to be preached, but practiced daily by potato growers. The Environmental Stewardship Award is a component of the Pesticide Environmental Stewardship Program of the National Potato Council and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Sponsorship by DuPont Crop Protection helps make this award and presentation possible. Congratulations to the 2008 winners.